Good afternoon. We welcome you to this service, uh, Blue Christmas service, a quiet, meditative time for you to just think about how the holidays are impacting you. There's a lot of folks I know who are really struggling right now with what's going on in the world, and maybe you've experienced a significant loss this year. I hope that you will take this time to let your feelings emerge, to be where you need to be. If you have a candle, you could have that present with you throughout the service. If not, that's okay. I want to welcome those folks from Jarrettown United Methodist Church who are joining us today. Uh, we are so glad to have you along with our GDC folks, uh, our Reformation folks, and others who join us uh, around the country. We're so glad that you're here with us. I want to especially begin by thanking our two musicians, Kelly Graber Anlas and Yao Jung, uh, Yao Jung Young. Uh, Yang, sorry, my mind is uh, not doing well. It is a time when we think and ponder, and I hope you'll ponder with us. Hear this welcome. In the beginning, when it was very dark, God said, let there be light. And there was light. In the beginning, when it was very quiet, the word was with God. And what God was, the word was. When the time was right, God's son was sent. He came among us. He was one of us. But the world did not receive him. But to those who know him and believe, God calls his children. word from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. 
Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We light this first candle to remember those persons who have been loved and lost. We pause to remember their name, to imagine their face, and to hear their voice. We give thanks for the memory that binds them to us this season and ask that God's eternal love would surround them always. Amen. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is text from Habakkuk, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4. I will stand at my watch post, the station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks to the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith.
We light this second candle to redeem the pain of loss, the loss of relationships, the loss of jobs, the loss of health. As we gather up the pain of the past, may we find a way to gather it and then to offer it to you, O God, asking that into your open arms we can place our pain and that you will place the gift of peace in ours. Refresh, renew, restore us, O God and lead us into your future. Amen. Matthew, the first chapter, verses 18 through 25. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." 
All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin Sal shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. We light this third candle to remember ourselves this Christmas time, to get in touch with our own experiences and our own emotions and feelings. We pause in this moment to remember the past weeks and months and for some of us years that we have grieved. We remember the poignancy of memories, the grief, the sadness, the hurts, and the pain Let us remember that dawn defeats darkness and that Christ has come to bring light into our dark world. Amen.
I was in seminary, one of my professors in a class that was talking about theology and preaching was talking to us about funerals. And he said, one of the hardest things about funerals is that the loudest voice in the room is death. That death has spoken, death has, has claimed the loudest voice. That death has taken over our hearts and our minds and often our spirits as well. Some years later, I was talking to a colleague of mine who's a chaplain in a hospital, and I asked them about what the most difficult thing was, and ironically, she used the same language. She said, what's hard is that you go into a room, no matter what's going on, and pain and loss are the loudest voices in the room. Often, it is suffocating when we're in the midst of pain and loss. A few years ago, Cindy and I went to Washington, D.C. for a march. On the way back, I fell and broke several ribs and dislocated one of them. It was the most painful injury that I have ever experienced in my life. The very act of breathing, talking, moving, coughing, Laughing was painful. It reminded me that even in those moments when you cannot see the pain that is happening inside someone, it doesn't lessen the degree of the pain that is inflicted on their minds and their spirits and their souls. The last 10 months have been so very hard. They've been hard on families. They've been hard on our first-line health care workers. They've been hard on folks who have lost loved ones. But that's not all the loss that we have suffered. Throughout the candles thus far, we've talked about the loss of a person who's died in our lives, the loss of relationships, the loss of our own sense of well-being, the loss that just continues to multiply Never in my life have I ever thought that I could say magic words and pain go away. But sometimes I wish for it. I wish that there was that one thing, that, that magic pill or that piece of candy or that word from someone that you love who could make it all better. We grieve in very different ways. We experience pain and loss in so many variant ways. And the only thing we can do is move through it. Some people describe the loss of a loved one as sort of walking through a haze, walking through the fog and hoping at some point that the fog will be lifted and they will be able to smile again. For years I have known that the holiday season is often very difficult for folks who have lost someone or had significant pain or loss in their lives. There is this desire by others that they see to be happy all the time. There are beautiful songs that are sung. We've heard some of them already and some to come that can even bring a tear to our eye and maybe a smile to our lips. Many of you, many of us are not ready for the joyous Merry Christmas yet. We need to sit just for a little bit longer and, and pray that God will be with us as we sit in the midst of the fog. But the promise that comes, the promise from our God, the promise from Jesus is that we will never be alone that our pain is never held entirely on our own. The language of that last candle was to, to put that grief and pain in our hands and to hand it over to God. It's easier said than done. It's often hard to lay that pain aside, and there is no real typical process of grief. For some, it takes decades. For others, it takes years. For others, 
They find some glimmer in the midst of the fog sooner than others. And the only thing that I can say to you is a blue Christmas reminds us that your feelings are your feelings. The pain and loss that you have suffered is real. The anxiety you may be feeling in the midst of this time is real. The isolation or the loneliness is real. And so is God's presence. Advent is a double reality. It is that waiting once again to hear the story of Christ born in a manger and awaiting Christ's triumphal return to bring about God's kingdom. God is with us from the beginning to the end. God is the Alpha and the Omega. God is with us from infancy all the way to death and resurrection. God is present with us, wrapping arms around us, saying, I hear and feel your pain. Feel my love and grace and hope and peace and joy for yourself. So on this blue Christmas, this last Sunday before Christmas Eve, know that sometimes death and pain and loss are the loudest voice in the room for a while. Sometimes it feels like the fog will never lift. But hear this word of grace and hope. The fog will lift. The pain will subside, though for many it will not go away uh, completely. The loss will become less painful and more joyous as we remember the amazing memories that we had with those we lost. This year will end and we'll begin again in hopes that this next year is better than this one. But even in the midst of this tough year, God has sustained us. God has been with us. God has cared for you and opened his arms to receive your frustration, your pain, your loss. All you need to do is gather it up and let it go so that God can carry you the rest of the way until the fog lifts. And the pain lessens, and the loss is remembered, but there is also peace and joy. Amen. We light this fourth candle to remember our world where pain and sorrow Homelessness and disease, conflict and war occur in the lives of millions of people. We know that injustice and poverty, oppression and hunger are all too common. May God help us to have compassion for others as we work towards peace and justice for all people everywhere. Amen.
His law is love, and His gospel is peace. Chain shall He break, for the slave is a brother, and in His name all the oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy. the scripture from Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses two through seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. If you have your own candle and have not let yet lit it, light it now as we see all that God is for us in the lighting of the Christ candle. As we light this candle, we remember the gift of hope which God offers to all in the Christmas story. We remember that Jesus was born to bring us abundant life, forgiveness, and healing. We know that the angels declared peace and joy to all with the birth in Bethlehem. God shares our life. God shares our pain. God promises to be with us at all times, in all circumstances, and in all places, both good and bad. And so let us remember the one who shows the way and who goes with us into our tomorrows. Amen.
spent time this afternoon remembering our losses, naming, hearing, and seeing once again those who we have lost, setting aside some of that to try to find peace and joy and hope in the new year. These candles represent all that we are, not just the good, happy stuff, but all of who we are, all that God has made us to be in all the ways that God is present with us. Maybe you felt just a glimmer of hope today and a reminder of the loss that you have that will not be with us forever. Candles light the way in the darkness. May God's light light for you a way forward as we experience this holiday in all the ways that you need to, even if that means pulling back some. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, as your light lights up this wreath, it lights up our lives. In the ways that you are with us, holding us, caring for us, wiping the tears from our eyes, we thank you, O oh God for all of the gifts that you have given us, especially the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. This day, O oh God, we give you thanks for the musical gifts of Yaozhu and Kelly. May their ministry continue to bless us in the hours and days to come as you think back about this time together. Holy and gracious God, in the midst of darkness, may we find light. In the midst of pain and sorrow, may we find hope. In the midst of pain, may we find healing. Amen. And now may the God who loves us all bless and keep you and all whom you love. Amen.
joy to 